I learned that I'm not a dual threat quarterback. I like to call myself a triple threat quarterback because I might beat you with my arm, I might beat you with my legs, and I might beat you with my mind. Stan Becton, HBCU Next here with the number one quarterback draft eligible for this year's 2023 draft class, Dion DJ Golot. Welcome to HBCU Next. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Blessed to be, be here, see another day. You know, just happy to be here. Yeah, and for those who don't know, Dion is one of the top HBCU prospects in this year's draft. Of course, HBCU Next will be highlighting a number of HBCU prospects. There's no better way to get started than with the number one quarterback coming from an HBCU this year. So we're going to start right there. You're a quarterback. Everyone knows quarterbacks got to have it up top first, the mindset. So take me through what is your mindset as a quarterback when you go out there on the field every game? Um, so, I mean, going into the games, the high approach of uh, games and it really starts on practice on that Monday for me. Um, it could be that Sunday night as well, going into that week. Um, Monday, Monday, that's that's my big film day because I know uh, last year we didn't practice on Mondays, and so um, that was my big film day. Um, we didn't, we were supposed to be off on Mondays, but that would be my day to go in with the with the coach and let's try to scheme it up together, coach. Like you know, um, just try to put my best foot forward, um, get a get a head a, a head start. And um, scheming, scheming up for the upcoming team. Um, I'm just going in there, trying to do my job, man. Um, every every team, they're gonna, they're the job of the coaches is to surround, surround the team with a bunch of players that can make plays. And my job is just to get it to them. Um, doesn't have to be the big play all the time. Um, and so I just try to do my job, manage the game, manage the game, win the game, win the game. That's my that's my biggest thing. Um, I'm not I'm not going out there to try to try to do anything special or anything like that. I'm going out there to win the game because it's a, it's a team game. It's a 11 guys on the field and they're all, we're all counting on each other to everybody do their job. You know, if everybody does their job together, then you should come out successful. Um, in terms of being in the game, um, in the game, I like to process a lot of information, um, try to confirm things that I may see on film or things that, I may say on practice, it may be correct, it might not be because you know other other teams practice too. Um, they 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 try to confuse you sometimes, and so while I'm going through the game, I try to process a lot of that information to confirm what I'm seeing. Um, if I'm seeing something different, then I make sure I communicate that with my team and my coach uh, on the sideline and move from there and go win. Yeah, and it sounds like you really put a lot of time in pregame as far as film study, a little bit more than what I've heard from some other quarterbacks and other players. It seems like you're really doing that. And it sounds like you're really being a leader on that field, even during practice, in addition to the game. So I just want to talk about that leadership aspect. Of course, every quarterback has to be a leader. It's the nature of the position. But it seems like with you, you're kind of taking that next jump in your leadership abilities there at Bowie State this last year. What was it that allowed you to Kind of develop as a leader, especially given you know you guys lost your head coach in that offseason, a championship winning head coach, and you guys are coming off that three peat and whatnot. So, how were you able to maintain the ship as a leader? Um, well, I mean, I, I got a lot of leadership qualities from my father. Um, my, my, my pops, my pops was a coach, and so he he instilled in me that leadership ability to be able to lead a team, lead guys. I've, I played quarterback for a long time. Like, you you know, I've, I've known you my whole life. And so uh, just just being being a leader is is big for me because I like to see other people happy. Like, that's that's one of, like, my personal personal uh, things that I like to see. I like to see other people happy and, like, who's not happy winning, you know? And so so I like to I like to just make sure that my guys are ready. Um, my guys are confident um, going into the games. Um, making sure that everybody's on the same page and what the plan is for this game. Um, in terms of, in terms of like how I, how that has uh, picked up over the years, it did take some time. It took some time for me being young 
a, the younger guy in the room to the older guy now. Um, being a, being an older guy and having a lot of uh, younger guys under me, um, just making sure that they understand the process and how how college football works and how football works in general. And so um, being being one of the older guys that definitely helped um, in terms of leading the, leading the group. Um, and sometimes even when I was young, like I I felt like I always had to be a leader. You know, um, that was like I said, that was something my parents instilled in me. Like never be a follower, be a leader. Like um, don't don't follow the group. Like lead them lead them to where they're supposed to be and what you know and what we've instilled in you. So that's that's where it comes from. Yeah, you talked about when you were young, maybe your leadership wasn't the same as it is now. Of course, that's normal. But how did sitting that one year? when you were at Bowie, help you develop as a leader and as a player on the field as well? Because I know you transferred from Morgan State and HBCU to Bowie State, another HBCU, but you didn't play that first year that much. So how did that help you kind of develop as an overall player? Um, That helped, that helped me a lot, man. Um, That's where I really focused in on the film and really focused in on what scheme like I tried to I, I I could always play football I felt like I felt like I always had the athletic ability to be able to play and be successful at it but now I wanted to see if I could tap into the mental side of it um I wanted to see if I can combine them and see how good it could take me how how good it could make me how 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 I always try to get better every day um and so sitting that sitting that one year definitely definitely helped me um because I got to see things from the sideline I got to see things like a coach sees it you know, um, I got I got to I got to also uh, I had to be able to communicate to the quarterback that was playing. I had to communicate what I saw for him, because, like I said, it's a team game and it's not only the 11 people that's on the field that can help, you know. Um, so like playing playing my role and being the eyes from the sideline and trying to communicate with whoever's on the field. It doesn't matter if it's a quarterback, running back, anybody on the offense. If I see something, I'm going to tell them. You know, if they're if they're playing a certain defense, I understand I understand the leverages of what a DB or linebacker may be playing against a receiver based on based on the shell of the defense. And so, like, just saying just saying small little things um, definitely definitely helped. I feel like us as a team, um, I just try to I just try to be a good teammate, man. Um, try to help the team win in any way. If I'm on the field, if I'm off the field, you know, if 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 I can help the team win in any way, that's 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 my goal. Yeah, and it was great to see that kind of leadership really show, that kind of development really show. I mean, you can see the difference in, you know, year to year, especially with that year off. Kind of surprised some people in that CIA just, they were like, who is this kid coming from Morgan? We didn't know, but we had another one, another quarterback putting up numbers like that. So that was good to see. And speaking of those numbers, had numbers through the air, had numbers on the ground, had numbers inside the pocket, had numbers outside the pocket. So take me through that kind of mobility as a passer, what you bring, that extra element that you bring in. Tell me about how you kind of make that decision-making process, whether, you know, got to deliver the ball down the field or got to attack a defense with your legs. Um, so it all it, it all comes within the situations of the game, um, definitely. It's definitely a big one. Um, two, um, like I said, I, I take very – I take very great pride in watching film. Um, because you'll you'll understand based on what defense some uh, a team may play, you'll understand the voids of the defense. And so sometimes, sometimes the defense will void a certain area based on the route concepts that you have on your side. And if they're not in that area, that's a free lane for you to be able to go. You know, um, so so no know, knowing that and just pre-snap, pre-snap reads and post-snap confirmations, um, that's a big thing. Um, but like I said, it's also it also depends on the the situation in the game. If it's if it's third and third and long, like I understand, like hey, the defense may drop. They may they may drop deep. You know, um, they may they may drop deep. They might not be paying me any attention. If it's third and short, they may drop. They may not. You know, just just understanding what the situation is in the game. Um, if it if I feel like I'm uh, athletic enough to go get it with my legs, I'll go do that. If if I feel like my my receivers have enough space in front of them to to make a play or if, if my read takes me there, that's, that's what I'll do. Um, and, and yeah, man, it's just, just understanding the situations and, and film, film watching and making sure that you confirm what the defense is doing. That's the big thing. So what would you say your biggest strength is as a quarterback? 
I think my biggest strength is my football IQ. Um, I, I, I learned, I learned young, um, that I'm, I learned that I'm not a dual threat quarterback. I like to call myself a triple threat quarterback because I might beat you with my arm. I might beat you with my legs and I might beat you with my mind. Um, because I, I have the, my coach gave me the enough freedom this year to be able to check protections and, uh, sometimes check certain route concepts based on which side and what the defense may play. And so um I, I like to I like to say that that's that's what I that's my mind is probably my biggest attribute. But second second to that is my arm. Um I, I've never been the fastest guy. Um never been the the uh, biggest, strongest, fastest. Um but but I could I could always throw, you know, um it was it was just something it was a God given ability. Um, my, my grandfather played baseball, so I may, may have got it from him. He likes to, he likes to say that he liked to used to say that a lot, um, before he passed, but, but, um, it was just a God given ability. I was, I was blessed to be able to throw the ball and just try to hone in and perfect my craft every day, every night, um, as, as much as I can. Yeah. So let's go back. I want to go all the way back to the start. You started, of course, I see the Riverdale Baptist helmet in the background. You went from there to Morgan state. So take me through the lessons learned at Morgan State before you transferred. Of course, your, your journey is more than just, you know, that one year at Bowie. Let the viewers and the listeners know exactly kind of that start process and how you still, even though you had to make a change, we all got to make a change. You know, we all got to sometimes make that change, go to that next step, elevate in life. But take us through that start and kind of that college foundation and coming up those lessons that you learned. So you said college? Not yes, high school first, and stuff. Yeah, when you first started, yeah. Okay. Um, going into my freshman year of college, um, so I wasn't, I was like I said, I wasn't big on on film. Um, just based off how how I was uh how I was raised, I was just always raised just just go play ball, like you know, go play football, man. Um, so going going into my freshman year, it got it, it really opened my eyes. It opened my eyes to be able to see like, okay, football is more than just being fast, being strong, being physical. Um, it, it's more, it's more than just throwing a ball as hard as you can, as far as you can, you know, um, it's, 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 it's a lot. It's a, it's very, it's very in depth. Once you, once you get the interest and actually, uh, try to learn it. Um, and so going, going into Morgan, my freshman year, I can't, I came in knowing that they had, they had, had a transfer senior, just like I just did actually they had a transfer senior come from uh, Mississippi state. And so like, I was I expected to play just based off of like you're you're a naive high school recruit, you know, you going in like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm ready to play right away. Um so go, going in it it, it kinda it kinda humbled me. It humbled me a lot because I had to I had to learn, you know, I had I had to learn, I had to uh, perfect my craft every day, going it's hard going in, um, putting in the same amount of work, feeling like you're doing everything you can to to be able to play. And and it, sometimes it doesn't work out for you, sometimes it does. Um, and so just sitting there watching and, and learning what to do, what not to do, um, just always taking mental notes. Um, I do that a lot, uh, a lot of, a lot of mental notes. I, I got, I have the ability, uh, God given ability to be able to like, kind of not dream things, but draw things in my head. Um, I, I've always had that. I've always had that ability. Um, and so just, just being able, just being able to sit there and watch and learn every day. Um, Cause football, I love, I love football. It's, it's been my, it's been my love since I was young. Um, and so being able, being able to just sit there and watch, being able to sit there and watch and intake information and understand what to do and what not to do in certain situations. Uh, listening, listening to the coaches and take, being able to take coaching. Um, trying to think what else. Those. Those early days were were rough because I, I went into I went into college thinking I was gonna play and I didn't. Um so like, you know, distractions. I was a young kid, I was 18 years old, you know, just first time on a big college campus, you know, everything. It's the H HBCU life, man. Like, you know, you see like a bunch of everything, girls, you see things some sometimes you may not have seen before, but I just always had the mentality to just stay focused, man. Um stay focused because I, I felt like I was there for for a bigger purpose. Um, I felt like I was there for a bigger purpose. And then I knew, I knew my abilities. I knew what I can do because of who I have played with and who have I played, who I played against. And so like, I'm like, if I see everybody else doing something like I, it must be something that I'm doing. You know, I had to humble myself and, and look at myself and see what I was doing wrong. And so once I did that, everything came full circle and I ended up playing my red shirt freshman year, um, had a good, had a very good ending to that year. Uh, got the opportunity to uh, play 
me and me and the quarterback had uh, been rotating later in the year. And then the coach finally made the decision to to let me play. Um, once I did that, um, I, I kind of took off from there, man. Um, received some accolades and stuff, and just did my thing. My sophomore year, I got uh, hurt like middle of the year. Um, that was another that was another big part. I got a high ankle sprain, but uh, it had me it had me sit out for the rest of the year because it was later in the it was later in the season. And so even just that, like as soon as that happened, I, I honed back then on the film. I honed back then on learning the game because it was still things to learn. It like you can learn something every day, um, like life. That's that's life in general. There's always something to learn every single day. So I just kept doing that and ended up here at Bowie. Um, I transferred from Morgan, like I said. Uh, that that transition was kind of rocky because it was COVID. It was a summertime. Transfer portal was fairly new. Um, and so I, I graduated from Morgan. I had some transcript problems uh, with that graduation. And so I kind of got to Bowie very late. Um, I got to Bowie, I got to Bowie like the last week of, of camp because of my transcript. My mom actually had to go up to the to Morgan and like talk to them like, hey, like my 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 son is trying to leave. Uh or my son has graduated, he's trying to go into grad school. And so um, she she got all of that done. Like I couldn't, I, I don't know why I couldn't get it done, but you know, mom, moms have a different type of power, so. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And you mentioned a lot, learning the game. Learning the game, learning the game, learn, learning the game. It's something you've been hammering across, you know, throughout this entire interview. And I just want to see what have you learned about the game after the game, of course, you stopped your season, uh, ended your season, you know, finished the season. I don't want to say stop, finish the season. Stop sounds kind of negative. You didn't stop. <laughs> you finished the season. And then you've been preparing for this next level. You know, I've seen some of the quarterback workouts you've been going to, preparing for the workouts. So how have you been able to, you know, learn the game? What have you learned as a player on and off the field, learn about yourself outside of football during this preparation process? Take me through it all. Um, during this preparation process is – it's more just being being determined, um, being persistent, being consistent um, with with your training and trying to get better every day. Um, trying to trying to perfect your craft in any way possible. Um, I, I like to I like to take the term like Mamba mentality uh, from Kobe. That was my favorite basketball player growing up as a kid. And so like he watching watching him and his work ethic, man. Um, like I I used to play basketball too. Um, and so, like, I always, I always wanted to be like Kobe. Like, I had Kobe shoes. I got, a, I got Kobe jersey. I, I had everything, man. Um, with just watching him and and learning, learning, really hearing the different stories about him, um, kind of, I kind of put that into my own life. Uh, like, I'm doing something at every moment. Um, it could be, it could be 7 a.m. in the morning. It could be 6 p.m. It could be 1 a.m. I'm, I'm doing something, um, you know. And so, just, just doing that. Um, I, I learned that you have to be persistent. You have to be consistent, with whatever you do, uh, whether that's football or whether that's work or job, whatever, you know, uh, having, having that mentality, that's, that's a, that's a big thing uh, for me, at least um, in terms, in terms of through this process, what I've learned so far, um, what I've learned is that you just have to be your true self. You have to be your true self. Uh, let, let people get to know you, let people understand how you think and, and, um, it, it really tests you on how much you love football because when, when it, when the football uh, seems like it's deflating or it seems like it's, it's running away from you, that's when you see if you really love it or not, you know? Um, and so that's, that's where I'm at, man. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm getting better every single day, waiting for my opportunity, excited to, excited to see you down in new Orleans, man, uh, this week. Um, you know, we, we go, we go a long, long way back. And and even, we got even closer, like through the different situations that have happened over the years. And so, um, just excited to excited for this process, man. Excited for the process for sure. Yeah, you mentioned New Orleans. Can't leave without talking about the HBC Legacy Bowl. So you will be participating in that. We'll be participating in the HBCU Combine. So what are some things you're looking forward to about that? You know, get to compete against the best of the best from HBCUs. I'm definitely looking to compete against the best of the best, man. That's that's the big thing. I'm a competitor. Like I want to, I want to win in everything. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be football, basketball, soccer. I might be playing my little nephew in Connect Four. I'm trying to beat his ass. Um, and so I'm. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what it what it is. I'm. I'm trying to. I want to compete. Um, every single day. Um, and so I'm just excited to be able to connect with the guys, with guys from different areas, different states. 
Um, I'm excited to meet the legends, man. Uh, I got the opportunity to meet Doug Williams, um, not only at my at my game uh, this past year, but I got to meet him uh, at Bullets um, for the funeral. So uh, meet, meeting him, that's a big thing. My, my my dad was a big Doug Williams fan. He used to have like a, he used to have like a, not a memoir, but he had like a frame of when he won the Super Bowl. Uh, he, he had a frame of the newspaper article that came out, like an old antique, like, like one of one newspaper that came out uh back back uh back in the day when when he was playing so just just to be able to go and and learn the history of black QBs and and see what they're doing today and uh meeting all all of the greats um you know Doug Williams, Shaq Harris, everybody, um Pat Mahomes and just excited to be able to compete and show what I can do. All right, so we got the HBCU Legacy Bowl coming up next week. But before that, we're going to end it here with some rapid fire questions. So we're going to keep it kind of New Orleans theme. First question, okay. gumbo or jambalaya? Jambalaya, jambalaya over rice. Jambalaya over rice. All right. Next question, fourth and goal or fourth and long? But the fourth and goal is from the one yard line. The fourth and long is get it in the field goal range for a game winning kick. Which one do you want? I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in my offense, man. I'm, I want that fourth and one. We, we going quarterback sneak. I'm confident. I want my offensive line. We're going, we're going to beat man on man. Like, yeah, easy. All right. Next question. Who's your favorite artist? My favorite artist. So, okay. This is very big. This is a very tricky question. Is this it's R and B, hip hop? It doesn't. Or it doesn't Who's the matter. artist like, you have to listen to before a game? Let's change it. Who you got to listen? Ooh, to? before a game, I have to listen to Larry June. A lot of guy, a lot of people don't know about him. He's he's a, a California based rapper out of a out of the Bay, out of the Bay Area. But he's very. I have to listen to him because he gets me in my calm state. You know, being a quarterback, you have to think a lot. So like, you can you all the hype and stuff. Like I'm I'm not really too big into it. You know, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hype if my teammates need it and stuff. But like, I like to I like to lock in. So Larry June gets me locked in. Larry June. Worst food you ate in the HBCU cafe? Say that again. Worst food you ate in the HBCU cafe? So a lot of people don't notice about me. I was vegan for for uh, two years. Um, from the twenty from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty one, I was vegan. And so I, I was big on the salad bar, man. I, I, I was, like I said, I was always trying to do something to get better, get ahead of the game. Like, I'm, I'm like, I, I went to the salad bar, but fried chicken Wednesdays was definitely, that. I, I definitely went on fried chicken Wednesdays. So. Fried chicken Wednesdays, mac and cheese and collard greens with the, with the cornbread too, yes. And then the last question, you ready for this one? Yeah, come on. <laughs> All right, last question. You got one person you can have watch your game Dead or alive, who you gonna pick? Wayne. Easy. Right. <laughs> Easy. All right. Easy. Well, there you have it. The number one, my number one HBCU quarterback prospect. A lot of other people's number one HBCU quarterback prospect in 2023. Dion DJ Golot from Bowie State, pride of the DMV. Went to high school in DMV, ended college in the DMV. Great to have you on the show, HBCU Next. Thank you for having me, Stan. Keep doing your thing, man. I'm, I'm definitely watching. Definitely tuned in. All right. See you at the HBCU Legacy Bowl this weekend.